Lads, you can take it from me. Facial hair can distract from a litany of sins. But the GAA moustache is almost from a bygone era. So we thought we'd dig out the history books and have a look at some of the most admirable feats of facial hair growth in GAA history. Here are some of our favourite finest GAA moustaches. For Jerry McInerney, it's the whole package, the flowing mullet, white boots, tanned legs, but the moustache, that's the je ne sais quoi to round it all off. PJ O'Connell's moustache fed into his obnoxious swagger. Although, he did have the nickname Fingers. What was going on in Clare in the 90s where lads had mad nicknames? Joe McNally has what we call taxi driver drip. And the moustache plays no small role in that. He was brought out of retirement by Mickey Whelan in 96 and he paid him back. There's just something about a moustache which rounds off the no-nonsense persona of a footballer. And Willie Joe Patton is almost the perfect example of that. Sylvie Lenan is almost exclusively known as being a byword for cartoon hardness. And it is probably exaggerated by having a very effeminate name. If Wexford Hurling in the 90s were to moustaches what Liverpool Football Club were to moustaches in the 80s, then Martin Story is basically Ian Rush. Lads, modern hurling needs a moustachioed hero. And thank God Cheddar Plunkett is still kicking his leash manager because he is fighting the good fight on the biggest stage. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell notification. Even if he didn't directly throw the ball into the goal in the 81 All-Ireland Final, Johnny Flaherty would have still been winning. Look at that moustache, strong as at. It came, it saw, it won six in a row. Keno Sullivan didn't really have his moustache for an elongated period of time, but even though it was fleeting, it was still iconic. And that's the end of the video. Feast on more balls.ie content right here.